بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حديث 162 in the chapter that deals with funeral rites yes brother Umma Atiya said we were forbidden from following the funerals, but it was not insisted upon us. Now in this hadith, Um Atiyah, may Allah be pleased with her again. She is telling us that we were forbidden from following the funerals, but it was not insisted upon us. Now scholars differed on the ruling women following funerals. And they also differed in women visiting graves. What would be most forbidden, to follow a funeral or to go into a graveyard and visit a grave? To follow the funeral. To follow a funeral. Why? Because there is, all males are there and there cannot be a mixture. There are more males there, but the amount of grief when women enter a graveyard is far greater. It is also great when they follow a funeral, but they have just washed it, they have shrouded it, they gave their farewells to the deceased, they're following it. Once they enter the graveyards, then it is chaos. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ said, May Allah curse those who often visit the graveyards among the women. May Allah curse them. So scholars differed. Now those who allowed women to follow a funeral took this hadith as their evidence. Those who forbade women from following funerals took this hadith as their evidence. The same hadith. How? Those who said it's haram, they cannot follow funerals, they say, listen, don't you know Arabic? Um Atiyah said, we were forbidden from following funerals. What does that mean? She didn't say, we were told not to. She didn't say it was highly recommended that we do not follow funerals. She said we were forbidden not to. And those who said no, it is permissible for a woman to follow a funeral said, okay, but read what's afterwards. She says, but it was not insisted upon us. Meaning that we were forbidden, but it was not so strong and don't go. I said, do not go. So this means that it is permissible. Scholars said, no, no, no. The command of the Prophet ﷺ was the first, which is, it's forbidden. It was not insisted upon us. That was the understanding of Um Atiyah. But that does not mean that this understanding is correct because we're instructed to follow Um Atiyah or the Prophet. We're instructed to follow the Prophet and the Prophet forbade women from following the funeral. And that is why this is the most authentic opinion. You know women. You know how emotional they are. What would a woman do if she is following her father's funeral? She would keep on shouting and screaming and maybe tearing her hair as a lot of women do unconsciously. They do acts that are completely forbidden that the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever do these things is not considered to be part of me. What is these things? Slapping the faces. I don't know, do you have it here? I've seen it sometimes in the news when there are floods or tsunamis, you find people weeping and they are slapping their faces. Not only women, also men. It's a sign of grief. And the Prophet says, he is not from me. And tearing the clothes. And this also happens a lot when people are in grief. And all of these are signs of jahiliyyah. And the Prophet said, والسلام, that who does such things are not from me. And it is extremely important that you write your will before you die. What to write, Sheikh? I don't have money. And I don't have any property. So what to write in the will? Well, you have to write in the will a piece of advice to your family, such as that you should fear Allah, 
you should not wail on me. Crying is natural, it's halal. But wailing, what's the meaning of wailing? Oh, my husband, you are the only one who used to support me. Who will support me after your death? I am dying. I'm going to die. I'm going to suffer. Things will happen. Bad things would... What to do after you have gone? You were the only supporter. You were... And all of this is forbidden entirely. Not only that, you should write in the will as well that if you have lent someone money, all of us may have lent someone money and nobody knows about it. He's my friend. I gave him money. Well, you should write in the will that I gave my friend so and so because this is part of the inheritance. And if you borrowed something, some money from someone, also you should write this down so that your family would pay those people back. Otherwise, Allah Azza wa Jal would hold you questionable in your graves. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, Jibreel came to me and told me when the Prophet was saying, he said, the martyr, all of his sins are forgiven. And then Jibreel came to him and told him all of his sins are forgiven except debt. So how many people now buy cars in installments, buy houses in installments? How many people borrow money from this man or that or borrow money to finish their school? All of this will not be forgiven. Watch out. Borrowing is a serious thing in Islam. And you should write in your will forbidding them from doing any innovation. For example, I spoke to my mother and to my siblings telling them that if I die I do not want any of the innovative things or procedures that we do in our country in my country in Saudi Arabia especially in the western region when a person dies they for three days between Maghrib and Isha they open the house for guests to come and pay their condolences not only that they block the roads and they hang lights on the streets in front of the house so they do not allow people to pass by with the cars and they set up like a hundred or two hundred chairs and people come and sit under the light in these chairs and they usually have someone to recite the Quran they pay him money to recite the Quran or they have a tape recorder and there are people who make coffee and tea and they give those who are coming to pay their respects and usually they sit and they chit chat for five ten minutes and they leave so you find them while waiting and those the relatives are in one row at front at the father and the brothers and so on the relatives they all sit on one row so they wait the people who come to pay their respects and they chat now they are in a place of grief and sorrow. So, did you see what uh, Ittihad Club did yesterday? Wallahi, it's a disgrace. And the guy says, what are you going to do tonight? Oh, let's go to somewhere uh, and, and, you know, play cards and spend the night. And Oh, did you see this or that? Did you hear what happened? And the Quran is being recited. And afterwards they stand up and they go. The Quran stops. They go and say, may Allah Azza wa Jal reward you in your loss and in, in your grief they, and they leave this is one of the biggest bid'as around the companion of the Prophet ﷺ, Jarir ibn Abdullah said that the companions used to consider gathering for condolences and preparing the food as niyaha, as wailing they used to consider this a form of wailing and this is an authentic hadith what the people do these three days after Isha prayer, everything, everybody goes. They say, don't go, don't go. Why? Well, they bring two or three sheep with rice and people eat from it every night. And this is exactly what the companion warned from. This is wailing, yet people do it. So I wrote in my will or I told my siblings and my mother if I were to die, nothing of this would happen the people my family would stay in their house if someone wants to come they come into the house 
no coffee, no tea for hospitality, and not between Maghrib and Isha, any time of the day or the night. They pay their condolences and leave. No dinners, nothing. The Prophet said والسلام, to his companions, make food for Al Ja'far. When Ja'far was martyred in Mu'ta, his cousin, he instructed his companions to make food for them, not for the guests. Why? He justified this by saying, لَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ مَا يَشْغَلُهُمْ Because now they're preoccupied with this calamity. So they will not have time to cook food for themselves. You prepare food and give it to them. And never ever the relatives and the friends and people fly over from different cities to pay their respects and give their condolences. Never ever it was reported that they gathered and do what these people do. Therefore, following the funeral for a woman is not permissible because we follow the instruction of the Prophet ﷺ. This is clear, inshallah. And visiting the grave is not permissible as well for women. Although it's an issue of dispute, Sheikh Nasr al-Din al-Albani says it's permissible for women to visit the graves. Sheikh bin Baz and bin Athimin say it is completely prohibited and this is what the majority of our scholars say because the disadvantages far exceed the advantages. What women do, not because their deficiency, but because of their emotional character. And we have to care for women's emotions. And that is why they should not go and visit graveyards. We have a short break. Stay tuned and inshallah, we'll... Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. The last hadith with us today, well actually it is not the last hadith, but it's in regard of the funeral rites. And afterwards we begin inshallah with the funeral prayer. So this last hadith, is hadith number 162 and the brother up there will read it for us inshallah Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam as saying make haste at a funeral if the dead person was good it is a good state to which you are sending him on but if he was otherwise it is an evil of which you are ridding yourselves in this hadith the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam is telling us how to carry the funeral and carrying the funeral also means that we have to prepare the funeral as quick as possible but this usually refers to carrying it however one may ask what's the ruling on delaying the washing of the deceased until his family arrive scholars say that if it's a short time this is okay, half a day, maybe, maybe a day, okay, maybe. But if it's more than that, no. Even if it's his son, even if it's his father, you have to hasten with preparation of the funeral. Why? Because the body will decay. The body will start to decompose and it would start to smell and change. And that is why it's something I did not mention when washing the funeral in warm areas some scholars say that it is advisable to put a heavy thing on the stomach of the deceased so that it would not start to grow because of the gases and of all of these things but Sheikh Ibn Athamin says that even if you put whatever you put it has to be extremely heavy which might cave in so the best thing nowadays is only to turn on the air conditions or as in some hospitals they put them in the coolers so it is highly advisable to quickly get it over with the funeral and not to postpone it so long having said that once you wash and shroud and offer the prayer how do I carry it in some countries, Muslim countries, they walk bit by bit, very short strides and as if they themselves are dying. They do it very, very slow in where I come from. Usually they shout, they say, Wahidu, meaning proclaim and announce the oneness of Allah. 
So when they hear this, they say, La ilaha illallah. And all of this is innovation. One should not follow the funeral with shouting or raising the voices. All of this is haram. It should not be followed or preceded by fire. Even to put perfume or incense, this is also not permissible. And some people run literally while carrying it. And they run. And this is not permissible because there is a possibility that you will trip and make the deceased fall on the ground. So what to do? The thing is, the proper thing is to walk, but to walk in a fast pace. Why? This is the justification. If you're carrying your brother or your father who's dead, and you know that, inshallah, he's going to paradise, would you take him slowly? If he was awake, what would he say? Move! Come on, what are you postponing me for? What are you delaying me for? So, as long as he's a righteous person, you try your best to make it quick so that you would give him this gift he is awaiting. And if he's an evil person, and if he's a person with bad deeds, then you would like to relieve yourself from carrying this thing on your shoulder and throw him in his hole so that he would go to the punishment he deserves. So both ways, you would like to make it as quick as possible. Can we follow the funerals riding cars? Yes, you can. But the scholars say that the cars have to be in front, not in the back. Why? Some schools of thought say that those who ride should be at the back. Sheikh Ibn Aythimin says that this is not the right thing to do because if you're carrying the funeral and there are cars behind you, you're afraid all the time that they're going to run me over. So you'll not be walking nicely. The best thing for them is to walk in front of you. This would mean that they would open the road for you and you would be able to walk in comfort. Is it for those who walk behind the funeral? They should walk behind it or beside it or in front of it. All is permissible. So if you walk behind it or in front of it or on the side, this is permissible. And so many times we walk in front of it so that we would take a good position at the grave before they bury the deceased. What else? One would ask, should we say, as the people say, what do you believe or what do you think of the man who's dead? And people say, well, we believe that he's a righteous person, he's a practicing Muslim. Is this part of the Sunnah? No, it is not. Raising the voice and doing this is not considered to be part of the Sunnah. And once he's buried and we put... Well, we did not discuss the type of graves. There is the Lahd and there is the Shaq. There are two types of graves in Islam. Lahd, which is an L type. So you actually dig the grave and then you make an opening and then the grave goes on. So you put the deceased in the opening and you put bricks or you put stones and then you put the soil back again. And why is this? So that this would be more protected from animals finding the smell or trying to dig it out. The second type, and by the way, this is the way that the Prophet was buried in Lahd. The second type is the shaq, which goes completely down. The burial is taking place and then we put on top of him these stones or these uh, big plates and we bury him. As stated before, how do we put deceased in the grave? We put him head first from the feet of the grave. So if this is the Qibla, this is the feet of the grave and this is the head of the grave. We put him head down and then lying uh, him on his right hand side facing the Qibla. Do we reveal his face when we put him in the grave? No. We only untie the knots. That is it. But the face, the whole body is covered. After we bury him, 
the sunnah is that each one throws three handful of soil in the grave. After burial, we face the Qibla, we raise our hands if we wish, and we seek Allah's forgiveness for him, and that Allah makes him steadfast when he's asked. Because the Prophet said, والسلام, سَلُوا لِأَخِيكُمُ التَّثْبِيتِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا لَأَخِيكُمْ وَسَلُوا لَهُ التَّثْبِيتِ فَإِنَّهُ الْآنِ يُسْأَلْ Seek Allah's forgiveness for your brother, and ask Allah to grant him steadfast, because now he's being interrogated, he's being asked. And we know who will interrogate him, the two angels who would come and make him sit in the grave and ask him, who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who is your messenger? What did you do? How did you respond to him? Yani, I believe that this is what is needed to be known. Next time we meet, inshallah, we will talk about the funeral prayer and how the Imam stands from the body. Do we have any questions? Is it allowed to do post-mortem? Since we're not allowed to break the bones and stuff like that. Post-mortem. Is it allowed to have a body cut off after death? They're doing an autopsy or something like that. If there is a true and real need for that, yes. For example, if there is a doubt that he might have been poisoned or killed and we need to investigate, yes. But in normal cases, no. If a person dies naturally, one would say, yes, he died naturally, but I want to know, was it because of heart attack or high cholesterol uh, levels or high blood pressure? No, this is not permissible. To know the cause of death, not due to a legitimate reason just for the sake of it, this is completely prohibited, not even to cut a short or a small wound in him. However, some countries, so they tell me, it is mandatory to do this for everyone. Whether he dies peacefully or in an accident or in a crime, they do this for everyone. Unfortunately, if you cannot stop them, and this is by law, then may Allah forgive us. But if no, you have the choice, you must stop all proceedings and say, nope, no one touches my deceased or the dead person that is related to me. I'm afraid that this is all the time we have. Until we meet next time, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.